Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and uh, I got something different uh, today. Um, if you collect cuckoo clocks, you're going to get involved in collecting other wind-up type clocks. And uh, so this video is going to be a Dutch-style clock made by Wuba or Warmink. And uh, they're one of the uh, more popular Dutch style clocks. So kick back, relax, grab something to eat, grab something to drink, grab a cigarette if you choose to do so, and let's learn things. I bought this clock here a while back, and uh, it was in a box. Uh, that I never did open for quite some time because I got busy and uh, the clock has some damage that wasn't in the pictures and I should have opened up the box sooner that way I could have made a claim against it but anyway it's a Wuba clock there's the chains they didn't have the weights and they didn't have a pendulum um, to go with it. But uh, I, I've got weights and a pendulum for it. The movement is falling out of the case. And I have another clock similar to it. And I don't know whether you can see right down there. Right down here where I'm pointing, there's a hole in the wood where a bracket would have went to hold the movement, the top of the movement in place. The bottom of the movement slides into a slot. So anyway, I'm going to take this thing out and we're going to work on it. It is made by Wuba. Uh, a Dutch clock company, uh, one of the more sought after Dutch clocks. Here's a site that's talking about the uh, clocks. I'll try to leave a link to it in the description of this video. But here's my clock, this particular clock. Um, it's $325, but this is what my clock is supposed to look like. And it's got the star type pendulum to it. There's some other nice clocks on this site. I have this clock. You should be able to see the holes now where the brackets would have screwed down into. And so I'm going to have to come up with some uh, uh, brackets to hold the uh, top of the movement in. And like I said, the bottom of the movement let me turn this around. The bottom of the movement fits in that slot right there. And that way you don't need um, brackets. But it's a pretty case, you know, and I like the Dutch clocks like this. Here's the movement. It's got a moon dial. Like I said, it's a, it's a beautiful clock, the movement.
That will sound better after we're all done. The bell is loose. And the hammer is too close to the bell. If I was to bend it out of the way, it sounds a lot better. The, the hammer has to have some space in it for vibration purposes to make your uh, strike sound better um, UW uh, 747 um, I can't think why UW stands for I'll figure it out later um, I believe it was made in 1947 so anyway I got some pictures taken and we're going to take this thing apart. First thing you do, as with any clocks, is take the hands off. You don't have to worry about power. The power is driven by weights. And so uh, you always take the power off of the clock also. And this uh, dial plate is held in place by four little pins, tapered pins. So uh, once I take those tapered pins off, the dial plate will come off. Sometimes they can be a, a real pain to get out. So if you can't get one out, you go to the other side. And take them out and you come back to the one that you couldn't get out. I'm going to take the bell off anyway. It'll be easier to get to the dial plate. Now I should be able to, uh, if I'm lucky, get to the pen and push it like that one more and that's going to be the hardest one to get to there we go now I should be able to take the dial plate off Check out the uh, moon dial, how it's put on. There's a little bit of grease on this plate. We'll have to wipe that off. But the uh, moon dial has got this gear right here on it. And there's a pen on this gear. Let me see if I can bring some more light into this situation. There's a pen right here on this gear. As this gear rotates every 24 hours, it rotates the dial. This gear is driven by 
this gear here. So when you put it all back together, pay attention to this gear here. You see? So when this gear rotates every 24 hours, the dial will rotate one notch at a time. Actually, I'm just seeing if there's any pivots of play in the pivots that I need to address. You can see the virgin crutch assembly moves quite nicely. And there's two screws on this assembly. One side will raise up or, or lower, and they both might to, um, to help you put the clock in beat. You typically don't want to uh, mess with this too much. If it's in beat, I'm I'm looking to see which side you adjust. You can see it's typically the right side. As you can see, that hole is oblong or, or bigger than a, the screw hole. And you'd raise that or lower it to put the clock in beat. But... you assume that clock is already in beat. So you do what you want. I'm not going to uh, mess with this when I take it apart. I'll clean it up, but I'm not going to uh, do much more than that. So now we have to take I want to do a function test, of course, to make sure that the clock is striking as it's supposed to. Looking to see if this tab on the rack stop lever is falling into the notch notches squarely and when that is done you want to see where this third wheel warning pin is this third wheel warning pin should be hitting a tab typically on the rack stop lever and the rack stop lever tab is right here and the third wheel warning pin is up here sorry that's the wrong tab I'm trying to find out what stops this clock.
that third wheel warning pin is there for a reason and it's supposed to hit a tab when the clock is done striking but I don't see which tab it would hit I do now no sorry I guess this particular clock doesn't function like all the other clocks and that third wheel warning pin is only for when the clock goes into warning when the clock goes into warning I'm putting pressure on the great wheel when the clock goes into warning that third wheel warning pin is going to hit a tab that's on the lift lock lever here again it should hit a tab that's on the lift lock lever but I don't see it doing that and I think it's because whoever messed with this last time didn't put it together right so anyway we're going to take this thing apart and clean it I'm going to start by taking this e-clip off which is a brass e-clip so And then I got to take this E-clip off also to get the uh, rack off. Rack comes off. This uh, cannon pinion comes off. Then this little minute wheel with minute pinion comes off And I believe there's some really small eclipse that hold that rack stop lever on. So I'm going to have to take that off, off camera so I can see it with my extra eyes. I got it off. I don't know where it went. It's so tiny. But we could take the rack stop lever out. Now I take the plates apart. E clip right here to take the uh, gong lever off the hammer and you want to uh, pay attention how these went on
as you can see that wire right there is what makes it go back into the position that it was in And this um, brass lever here is really bent out of proportion. Now, if you can, when you take the plates apart, you always want to try to keep the gears in the position that they're in. That way, you could take a picture and get a relatively good idea of where they go. But in this case, because this wheel here, which has got the cam on it, and I didn't want to take the cam off, and the Mina Arbor center wheel, which is this gear right wheel right here, um, in order to get... Uh, this off you would have to take this piece right here off in order to lift the plate straight up and I didn't want to take that piece off so anyway uh, going from the uh, time side you have the great wheel You got this wheel here, which makes it an eight day clock. This wheel here, the escapement wheel. This piece right here is what is known as the lift lock lever. It is what actually lifts the, uh, the rack stop lever out of the way. This also has this tab right here, which would hit the third wheel warning pin when the clock is in warning. Strike side, you have the great wheel. This wheel here. This wheel here, which actually uh, causes the clock to strike. You have this wheel here, which has the cam on it, third wheel warning pin, and then the ply. Now it's time to put all these parts in my cleaner. But before I put them in my cleaner, I want to talk about the birch and crutch assembly. This has got an adjustable um, crutch on it. It's, it's a clutch type system that you can adjust to uh, get the clock in beat. Very genius system when it works properly. Sometimes they're so... I don't know how you how you would say it, but haven't been serviced in such a long time that they do not want to move. And I want to clean up the case, but I don't want to break this glass, which is held into place by four little bitty na nails. So what I did was take this chopstick and I bent those little nails to the side that way I can remove the glass now it's time to clean up this case okay so off camera I uh, cleaned up the movement I pegged out all the holes with a toothpick prior to putting in the ultrasonic cleaner, scrubbed it with a toothbrush, 
put in the ultrasonic cleaner, cleaned the parts, got the parts um, dried, uh, double rinse and uh, water. Um, I tried to uh, clean off this plate. I didn't like it. I still don't like it, but it has a, uh, a, a coating on it, so I'm not going to clean it off anymore. Now, I put the uh, lift lock lever on right. Now, this lift lock lever, unlike a cuckoo clock, is activated by these one of these two pens on this wheel here. And when the cl clock goes into warning, the tab on the lift lock lever will catch the tab will catch the warning uh, um, pen. I just uh, I'm trying to put it in warning for you. Uh, it should be in warning right there and and you see when I turn the wheels the third wheel warning pin is now hitting the tab on this lever here so when it goes out of warning the uh, lift lock lever is going to drop which will allow the third wheel warning pin to spin so i still have to put the um, rack stop le lever on and all these parts here but uh i just wanted to show you that um like i said i i got it uh, put together off camera and both of these uh, uh, birch and crutch assembly lift or raise or lower. So both sides lift and lower. So what you have to do is put some pressure on the the wheel to uh, figure out where it needs to go and you don't want the uh, 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 escaping wheel spinning um, not catching any teeth so it's Because this has an adjustable crutch on it, it's easier to do than without it. As you can see, the uh, skateboard wheel is not skipping any teeth, but you don't want it to easily... Um, go through the motions because your clock will run fast and so you have to just play around with it is what I'm getting at to get it to where the escapement pallet and the entry pallet have got the same distance on them. And basically all that means, you're not going to sit here with a tape measure and measure this stuff. Basically what that means is so you can get the virgin crutch assembly to do that right there. With it not doing it extremely fast, 
because if it does it extremely fast, then the entry and the exit pa uh, uh, distance on the escapement wheel is not enough and your clock will gain time no matter how low you put the pendulum. It's because it's uh, going through, uh, through the escapement wheel way too fast. I hope that makes sense to you. If your swing, when you put the pendulum on and your swing is a slow, it doesn't swing that far, and, but it's ticking, and that's because the birch and crutch assembly is up too high to allow it to swing far. It'll just go like this. So you have to drop the birch and crutch assembly to give the pendulum a longer swing. If the pendulum has a short swing, the Burge assembly, Burge and crutch assembly, the Burge assembly is up too high on the teeth. If it has a nice steady long swing, then it's right where it needs to be. Again, you can put this thing in beat with the burge and crutch assembly being up too high, but your pendulum is not going to swing that far and it's going to gain time. So, uh, I need to put the rest of the parts on. And I'm going to do that off camera. When I put the movement together, I wasn't paying attention to the gong. The gong tab that hits the star wheel is when it's done, it's on top of a star wheel. And it doesn't matter how many times I've taken this thing out and put it back in. When it's done, it's on top of that star wheel. And so what I have to do is I take this nut loose, take this wheel out, move that star wheel some so that gong tab is in between the star wheel teeth. As you can see, with this wheel out, I was able to move the star wheel, and now the lever is between the teeth when it's done doing its thing. Well, it was. So now I have to move it some more. Now this time around when we trip it and make it strike, the lever is in between the star teeth. So now it's time to put this wheel back on. So now I have this wheel back on, the gong lever goes in between the teeth. Okay, but, so, I'm going to talk to you about 
when the clock goes into warning, watch the flywheel. Flywheel turn. The third wheel um, warning pin is hitting that tab on the lift lock lever. And as you can see, it's 25 minutes past the hour. On the on the hour or a half hour, the lift lock lever drops, allowing it to third wheel warning pin to clear the tab to allow it to strike. Except for my wire came undone from where it needs to be on the gong. And I told you that this brass lever here is weak. It probably uh, is not going to be too good when I go to adjust this thing. So, again, five minutes till the hour, watch the fly. It, uh, it's now in warning on the hour the function test I went all the way around it works so it's now time to put chains on this movement and I still have to uh, come up with the uh, uh, pendulum I know I got one around here and I told you I lost a little bit of uh, eclip for this so luckily I had some eclips they were made in India I got them from time savers but we are getting there. And I, I still might have to drop this bracket some because that might be a little bit too fast. Here's a site that's talking about the uh, clocks. I'll try to leave a link to it in the description of this video. But here's my clock, this particular clock. Um, It's three hundred twenty-five dollars, but this is what my clock is supposed to look like, and it's got the star-type pendulum to it. There's some other nice clocks on this site. I have this clock, but I don't have the people. And again, I don't, my pendulum might be that. There's some beautiful clocks on here. And they know quite a bit about 
these type of clocks and this is where I got the information on the warm ink history warm ink clock was produced by a company founded in 1929 in Amalala a small town in the Netherlands warm ink clock is also known as Wuba clock this because the company originally was called warm ink Irving and well however you pronounce that that's how it's got the name Wuba later on they switched the company's name to warm ink this company dominated the Dutch clock industry because warm ink clock made quality clocks and one can say that during the 60s and 70s almost every Dutch household owned a warm ink clock also warm ink cl clocks company produced many different types of clocks the famous Sanese clock or the Salander clock which that's what I'm working on and not to forget the impressive Friesian clock unlike a German clock a warm ink clock has more decoration and their own unique design although the warm ink clock is not made today anymore because of quality and timeliness design the warm ink clock is still popular today and it's a real collector's items I know somebody that lives over in Holland and he buys these type of clocks all the time <clears throat> but they don't seem to appreciate them in Holland anymore and I don't know why because he buys them really cheap Well, that completes part one of this uh, two-part uh, video. I uh, hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope you're learning things. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave a link, excuse me, to the description of that webpage that I showed you about that has to do with all the Dutch clocks. And uh, you can see the prices and the different styles that they have. On their website and it gives you some history on the uh, Wuba uh, family uh, uh, clock history on their uh, making of clocks but uh, stick around for uh, part two of this video where I'm going to uh, test the movement out on my uh, clock stand and then uh, put it all back together and so uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Leave me comments. And may God bless each and every one of you.